We have now finally gotten ourselves a Turok 3 Remaster. This is one of the remasters I've been asking for for it to happen, considering Night Dive Studios already done Turok 1 and 2 Remaster. And now we finally got the third game in the series to get remaster treatment. Now, I'm just gonna say this. This was a Nintendo 64 exclusive. Now, there is no PC version, unlike 1 and 2 did. And let's just say Turok 3, even though plenty of people have begged for this, it didn't sell well on Nintendo 64, so meaning people didn't even know this even existed. I talked to a few buddies of mine about this game, and apparently they never knew about it, even though they're fans of Turok. The thing is, the game came out in the late lifespan of Nintendo 64, and they never knew this game existed. But yet, plenty of people talk about Fat Fur Day, which is a late Nintendo 64 game, which is pretty ironic if you ask me. So, it's a first person shooter, of course. I played this in Nintendo 64, I couldn't even beat it, but I do get some good reasons as to why I'm saying this. Certain bosses have terrible frame rate when it comes to fighting them. Even if I lower the settings, I still get frame rate issues for some reason. So you could play as two different characters in the game, either Joseph or Danielle. Each of them have their own strengths and weaknesses. One can swim faster, one can jump higher, one can use night vision, one can use grappling hook. And each different level, depending on which character you play, you go different routes. Both characters also have complete different weapons. Like, for example, like, certain bow and arrows, like, Daniel will use the explosion, the explosive bow and arrow, while, while Joseph uses the crossbow, which kind of does a pretty good damage to it. So, this is like, I'm gonna say this is the shortest of the series, considering there's like five levels for you guys to play, and most of the time, finding the secret parts of trying to get these weapon, the secret weapon to face the final boss is pretty easy to find. You just gotta keep looking. But, in terms of the gameplay, it's your typical Turok game. And I think you guys will enjoy this. It may not be the longest in the series, but it still has a Turok feeling. People were like, oh, it's just Turok, but it has aliens. Like, guys, did you play the game long enough to know what you're talking about? You do still fight dinosaurs in the game. Keep playing. It's there. I played it. But despite the game being difficult in the Tunnel 64, I still enjoyed it. And in terms of this gameplay, everything has improved in terms of the remaster. The frame rate has drastically improved, graphics-wise. I've noticed some people made complaints about the cutscenes in this one, maybe because the eyeballs looked out of place. But in terms of everything, look. If you guys are going to complain about the compressed voice, well, don't say anything. This was a Nintendo 64 game. Of course it's going to be compressed. I'll just say this about the remaster version. Or at least just Turok 3 in general. This game takes at least, if you guys know what you're doing at least, 4 to 5 hours to complete. And surprisingly for me, I managed to beat this as of the day the game came out. I'm not making this up. I should just mention too that Iguana Entertainment did not make this game. It was actually Acclaim Austin. And it was still published by Acclaim Games. So anyhow, I should just say that considering we now finally got Turok 3 Remastered, I'm hoping at some point that Turok Rage Wars will get its own remaster. As if anyone wants to play Turok just for multiplayer, that game should be for you, as it's just more like an Unreal Tournament type of thing. But again, I'm glad that Knife Dive Studios is still remastering some of these older games to be in more of a playable state. Because it's like I mentioned, like certain games have like terrible frame rate. And I'm glad they're out there like fixing those issues. Especially from Turok 3, which I really hate to say it. Because one of the boss fights in Nintendo 64, I know how to beat them. I can never dodge or anything, either because of controls or frame rate or both. Go to the Nintendo 64 and then you tell me that it's playable in a frame rate state. I will wait. But look, I've seen a guy named G-Man Lives talk about how graphics look too realistic. It's like, dude, it's a remaster. What did you even expect? If this is the same guy who was crying on Twitter, who made, who was like sad about 
people shooting a lot of innocent people in GTA, and he got butt hurt, and people ratioed him <laughs> to death where he hit replies. Don't take this man too seriously. As I did watch this review as much as everyone else did. But all I can say for Turok 3 is that it may be a short-lived experience for the game, but you're going to have a lot of fun. It can't be difficult, but fun. There's four different difficulties in the game. You got, you got Easy, Normal, Hard, and Oblivion. But I have one complaint about this game. A lack of manual save. You know how you played the original Nintendo 64 version and you get to choose to manually save at any time? Instead of that, I was just we were all just given autosave. I I get the autosave is great and all, but can I just manually save it in case something dumb happens? Cause one of the games, because I didn't get far into the level on the Town 64 version, I didn't even know that this one thing I had to use for the boss, so I shot it and I left because I was trying to see if there's anything else. Instead of me fighting the boss in a playable state, I was given this ridiculous treatment of a glitch. It would just like... Have him render... It was just like... Have him not be... Beat. At all. And you need to do something to beat this guy. And somehow whenever I shoot, nothing comes out now. So I don't know what happened. So I hopefully that Night Dive can fix this. I, saw, I also noticed the game... There's this part of the level in the first level. You're supposed to climb up these things or whatever. But for some reason, part of it is missing. And I'm playing this based on the Switch version. I really, really just hate it when people don't double check before they post the game out there. I really hope they fix this. Because me watching the walkthrough of the, the remastered version. There's supposed to be this an extra extension of the climb. But I can't find that for some reason. Even though I have played the game before, so I don't know why I would need a walkthrough. It just makes no sense for them to not check, or at least I would check before they publish the game out there. But knowing Night Dive, they'll probably fix this indefinitely. And look, the game does run at a higher frame rate and better graphics too. So that's a one-up on them in terms of everything. Because the frame rate was a major key part of the game when I first started playing it on the Nintendo 64 and it has improved drastically. If you guys want to feel like old school, you can you guys can actually play the game in CRT emulation in the game settings. So, if you guys want to feel old school, that's another way you guys can definitely do it too. Another way to play a game in old school style is secrets. Now, I don't know how I got these secrets, but it's there. You guys can play in big head mode, big feet. <laughs> I'm not kidding, big feet. Or a big head and big feet. Headless mode, whatever. It's all there for you guys. You can have all weapons and whatever else. It's kind of like if you guys want to explore the old school ways of cheating. Like, you know, just for fun. Like big, the, the big head stuff and everything like that. It's all there for you guys. You have to unlock them though. And no, you don't need no microtransactions to buy them. That's the cheapest way out of everything else. And we all know that for a fact. But there's not that many cheats in the game. But there should be plenty enough to satisfy your needs. But like I said, there'll be there's like different weapons you guys can choose. But there are some new ones like the Napalm Strike. All of this is just a sticky mine. That's kind of like I was saying. You press the fire button as soon as the thing lands on a wall or something or enemy and you go kaboom and that's it. I thought this was one of the weapons that's an example too. But again, for a secret weapon you'll need five parts of the thing and that's pretty much it. I guess I missed it in the first level, but I managed to find it everywhere else. But again, different characters, different paths, different routes. Cutscenes are the same, that's all you need to know about that one. People consider this game like the weakest in the series, but yet there's other games like Rage Wars and the Reboot Turok, which I don't understand how people miss those ones out. Rage Wars is just multiplayer, but there are some Game Boy conversions of some of these games. They're not really the same thing as the main console, but they're completely different. You know, I've always wondered if they'll do some sort of Turok Game Boy collection. I think that'd be interesting if anyone really wants to see how the Game Boy games played in terms of things. In my first Turok game was the Turok Evolution, but on the Game Boy fans. Kind of play like Contra or Metal Slug. I'll probably make a fail talking about that one at some point. But if you guys 
played one and two. I think you guys will like this game, despite it being the shortest in the series, as, as me just looking into it. But again, they're supposed to be multiplayer, but for some reason there's no multiplayer right now. I'm sure they might patch it in like they did with Turok 2. I think they've done that before when it came to Switch version, and they ended up bringing it in later on. So look, guys. Let them... Let them try to address the issues first, then they'll bring in the multiplayer. If they, did, if they can do it in the second game, they could probably do it in here. I'm not going to try selling them, defending them or, or anything, but I'm just saying that is a state of possibility that could happen. But yeah, let your voice be heard if there's any issues that you guys can pretty much encounter in some of these games. So, all I can say is, get hunting.